So I'm just going to turn, turn macro off because it could do some effects, um, time saving. Repeat. Repeat effects so yeah. that you could just set it up to do over a whole, um, you know, sequence of maybe 25. Blow his nose. <laughs> so one thing that was really great was <laughs> that you could set up a macro to do what I'm about to do and do repetitive um, strokes if you were just highlighting a certain area you could draw it in and just leave the machine to do that over <coughs> the five ten seconds yes. which is great and using the paintbrush uh, airbrush rather you could select the different size nozzles going back to that amazing kind of like um, airbrush effect that they they were the only people that did mm. this and you could start off with very, very gently. So as soon as I bring the pen near to the proximity of that palette, you can see the cursor comes mm. up and it's about 10 millimetres. And then if you very gently press, you could get this effect. I mean, it did shudder a little bit there. And if I press harder, you can see the flow really come through, which was, you know, amazing. And then you can change the nozzle size as well. So you can get exactly the same sort of thing, but with a different size and not nozzle. And that's great for rotoscoping and mm. different kind of blended effects. But you could also change the percentage. So you can ramp it up and down by moving the cursor up and down the screen so you don't have to numerically mm. enter it. Again, that's just time saving, isn't it? And then you get a much, much more subtle yeah, effect. Nice. You couldn't animate that lighter, darker, but it was still pretty, pretty good. Um, that could be done. And then there's painting, crisp smooth blur field again you could do that with these different airbrush effects so you could sharpen up an image couldn't you if it was um something that was a little bit out yeah, of focus yeah, or yeah. you could you could soften things that maybe you needed kind of setting back um mm. especially like news graphics couldn't you? you could kind of have that diffused look on and one smudge, side the smudges if you wanted lettering if you to wanted to see, yeah to go slightly blurry at the edges wasn't yeah it? you could yeah. push it across so you could do, um, let's have a look, delete cuts and just start off with a new piece of text. Um, go on, type me something in. Okay, and you can cut that out. And then turning off 3D and wiping. So you could start, I've lost it again, where was it? Stick smear, smudge. So with the rat you could buy and sell this to your 3d i think with your background so you could wipe that turn backgrounds off so you've just got white here and you could sell different frames that you generate on the paintbook side mm. to the ram quarter side mm. and one of the very fashionable sort of trends there were was basically if I can remember how to do it. So you could do this. Is it going to do it? That's very subtle, so subtle. That's smearing, isn't it? Oh, maybe it was the only that smudge. Thought, stamp, it's stamping it. Oh, it's stamp is the stamp. one you were talking about. Yeah. The smudge, though, was where you could yeah. use the pen. Nearly smear, yeah. So if you take that down in transparency, which is again, you could do that with text as well, and do. Can you see that? Yeah. It's a fair, and obviously to a less degree, making it a little bit more. And you could ramp up the size of the text here, not yeah. necessarily having to add it when you keyed it in. It's just sticking for a second. <laughs> so this, yeah, I mean, this effect was just great for um, doing little bumpers or for, you know, MTV, they use a lot of this and we would, have um you know just different effects like this sort of thing but they pop it in with maybe a, a, a kind of type of weekend maybe it was like a heavy metal weekend and they do make they create their own bumper um and they bolt that in with their package their promo that they were making so smear that and oops, it's much rigid, it's stamp. and back up to 100. okay so you could sell that if I make it a little bit smaller. Where's this size? Yeah, I think you could do this as well. Is that clicking it on? You could do that and then sell this. I'm not sure on this because these buttons are it's a bit foggy. Yeah. 
as to selling that to that frame. I'm going to save it in here just in case I mess it up. Mm, so, yeah, so sell it, selling and buying. So we'd sell a picture, one frame, and you'd sell it or send it to your your RAM quarter. So that would be down here. And there, there it is. It's 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 been sold down onto that RAM quarter. So it transports it from the paint box side through to sort of the, anim the option to have that animating side. So you could sell that. And then if you had taken in a background that had uh, like a, you know, a light source flashing across it, you could then buy in the next one of that and then you're directly adding this texture or this, this typography to that next, st next still. And so you'd buy that one in, do the graphics, sell it. And so it's like a very quick kind of way to toggle through um, a clip and create it like a bumper. So, is it, it was it sell because um, on commercials, every time you hit the sell button, it added five quid to the bill. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I should MPC. Before, that's, at MPC, it would have been, that is it? very likely yeah. exactly what they did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was a uh, oh, that yeah. So, so this is the sort of effect you could do. And I'm doing this very quickly. And that quickly. was used in, in uh, advertising all the time. Yeah. For the, the, you know, the building up. When they had a sale and it was like Selfridges or something, a sale, you'd have the name go, and then come out big. Come the, out. Um, I'm doing something. I mean, you know, it's very simple, sophisticated looking on screen, but very simple to do. Yeah, effective and, and eye catching and dynamic. It was really. And cheap. And cheap. Because it's just They'd, I, I would have been quicker than I am doing it now because I would have just yeah, confirmed. So it's, it's weird because you have to double click everything. Have you noticed? Mm. It, I think the next version didn't have that confirm wipe, confirm stick. So if Is that not in the preferences that you can turn that on and off? I don't know. I have a feeling it Is might. it? So. You know, double click to confirm. So, round quarter. Where is the so preference? Is there preferences two. that you're allowed to do or is that only the engineers can do it? No, you can. So, the. I, I think I loaded that. Yeah. Um. Oh, the preference in the library, isn't I it? I think that is. Yeah, yeah. The library. Did that sell it? And then I'd like to sell that one to number two. Oh, look, it's there. Sorry, like, yeah, you, got, you get an option to, there we go, I've done it. So you can access, you have a, just two little stores and you can either go, you can toggle between them and like what Mitch was saying is that it, you evolve a graphic. So it has more and more layers, it has more and more text, uh, you, you add more effects, airbrush boxes, bevels, until you've got a finished kind of um, compilation of effects. But if you want to go back, the way you'd have worked this is you'd save every pass, save that to the library as a picture. But if you're working on those next two le le levels, then you would have saved it to old and, uh, it used to be old and new, didn't it? Now oh, it's yes. one and two. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, is it? Yeah, it's one and two here. So it used to be old and, oh wait, it's the other way around. So you'd have the option to kind of restore back a bit, going, getting the um, Quantel to restore back one of those pictures mm parts of those pictures wouldn't it so you could kind of evolve almost a third picture so you had the two separate images and you could kind of make a hybrid out of those two and save that into one or two so it's like a little sort of self storage that you had the option to kind of interact with mm. and if I've done that ish so stick uh, I think that's yeah three and you could I think you could probably you know do stuff in this one but in 3d it was it was more of a raw kind of look as opposed to the kind of dve effect that um, you had in with the ram corder in the 3d option um i can't remember what else you want me to talk Should about my library, library. Going, my library. <laughs> what you've got a color effect yeah sorry i haven't done that um in the difference between this and probably Harriet, did you not have a colour 
I know, Fettle. I know, no, oh God, Fettle. I remember that from Colourful. Harry though. Harry, that's what Harry I meant, sorry, Harry. Harry Fettle, which yes. is colour grading. So what we could do on, well, actually, cast. Yeah, you did, look, there we go. So you can, mm. the whole thing you can ramp up on the RGBs. You can uh, gain, colour gain. Um, you can, yeah, there's the lum, lumen, luminance and chrominance. So that's a saturation of all over. You can do go for that kind of colour correction or the contrast or the brightness or the hue. So the hue is like a horizontal rotation. So well, brightness, um, brightness, saturation, and hue, of course, is one of the, is the alternative colour system to RGB. To, so yeah. the the contrast was their own little addition. But yeah. ignoring that, that that's one of the basic um, colour mixing systems. You could do a few natty little things called posterize, and I think it uh, all. I'm not sure, but oh, yeah, there was a colour ma map as well, wasn't there? And I think it looked basically it looked at your palette, so whatever you had in your palette, it would then charge that um, with the light to the dark, and it would sort of work out whatever light and dark was in your your um, palette here and replace those. Um, and original all. I thought there were some other ones. So use the Kia as well. You can do that. Oh, that's mosaic. That's it. So well, the squares. Just, you the could squares. have a really. Oh, it look like at it. Big Wait for pixels, this. Like big pixels. Wait for this. <laughs> you could either do it with the pen. So you could. Oh, yep. Yeah, that's okay. You have to do it as a square. So there we go, you can get that kind of effect in. And if you animated that, so imagine that going from very pixely to, to, to smaller pixels, to smaller, 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 and then that text is also animating. It's quite natty. It's quite, quite, isn't it? It's quite good. <laughs> um, so, uh, oh, love that. And what else is there? Field mode, that just stopped flickering. If you grab mm. something and there was between frames of fields, fields it was, yeah. Uh, and I know we have got colour festival. Oh, I feel awful now. I didn't see that. So that that was what that's what yeah. you used then. That was in Harry. So yeah. that's Harry. So it was it. What was first? Harry was first. Paint box. Yeah. Then Harry. Then Harry. Then Henry, and then the other two. Whatever. Then Harriet, Hal, and Edit box. And I don't know what order anything. I only know up to Harry. So you could invert stuff here. Invert all. Yeah, you can. I mean, this is this was good, wasn't it? It was quite kind of unusual to have this this option. Yeah. Well, the, the 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 thing. I mean, this was the development of, you know, Quantel started out. Um, it, it was a military company, uh, and they had developed uh, for. A missile guidance, um, a variety of digital systems, uh, and then uh, obviously it's a very limited um, clientele because you you've basically got the military might be divided into army, air force, and navy in any given country, but that's a maximum of three departments, and usually just you know the the, the ministry of defence and most, and then the number of countries in the world that had armies would use those modern things. So it was very limited. So they were looking around, as a number of computer companies were, um, for additional markets where they could sell this technology. Uh, and uh, the, the, there were basically two, which were medical and entertainment. So mili military stuff was all expanded out. And, and so the, like Silicon Graphics and all those companies, that's what they did. Um, because at the end, you know, the end of the war, the, suddenly these companies that had been developing these things, um, they, the, the, the requirements for military became less. I mean, the, the Cold War it still was there, but it was much less than during the war. And so you have to find things, and you know, you have other examples like Nikon that made the sights for guns and stuff, be, you know, became a camera manufacturer. So. Um, that was Quantel, and it, the, the company was called Micro Consultants, um, and then they set up a subsidiary to do entertainment, and they and they called it Quantel for quantized for quantization 
is the sampling that you make something digital, quant, quantized quant tell for television. So quantel was this quantized effects um, that micro consultants did for military for television. Uh, and um, so the first thing they did was what was called a time-based career because all these things that I believe you've discussed in other programs about uh, umatics and, uh, and electronic news gathering and they're starting to edit with umatic and then going from tape to tape machines. Um, you had all that, but the trouble was that when they went on to umatics, the signal was unstable, electronically speaking, not to do with the picture, but to do with the actual um, where a new line would start and where a new page or a new image would start. So these pulses became noisy and they invent and, and using digital techniques, you were able to make a thing called a time-based corrector that stripped off, left the picture bit and stripped off all the technical stuff and put on clean technical stuff. And that was a time-based corrector. And mm -hmm. so Quantel did one of the first digital ones. That was their first product was a digital one, which I think was Quantel 3000. And as an aside, because they captured the whole frame and momentarily had it in a store, then there were other things you could do with it. And they just, it didn't cost them anything to do it. They added a couple of things. To tr there were lots of people doing this. There were, you know, five or six companies making time-based correctors. And so you want to distinguish yourself. And so they realized, because they were mathematicians, that you could read out in reverse order and that would then get the picture back to front and you could reverse the time frame and you could make it upside down so you could go in other words do all the lines st start in the bottom go like that and you got it upside down or you could do all the lines instead of going like that you could go like that and it would be back to front so they put in you could flip it or you could flop it uh, and then the other thing they made was you could move it around so that if you were you know putting a picture inside a caption, you could do that. And then the other thing that they'd noticed, just as viewers, because they knew nothing about television, but as viewers, they'd always noticed the newsreaders and in magazine programs that they had in those days, like Tonight or whatever, um, they had the, the presenter and over their shoulder was, a, was a, usually about a quarter of screen, was a quarter screen box. Um, so if they're talking about, um, you know, uh, uh, the, I um, don't want to talk about anything that will date this. So if, if they're talking about, um, you know, shops, they're talking about something in fashion, they'll have a shot of uh, a shop in the picture. So they'll have a shot of Harrods up in the, in the screen. Now, the way that this was done was really cack-handed and consisted of an area of black drapes in the corner of the studio. And inside it was the best monitor they had and a camera with a zoom lens. And then in his viewfinder, he had the picture of the newsreader, and then there was the blue box. And so he would zoom the camera back and misframe it so that the monitor was inside the blue box. And then in the vision mixer, they would cut his picture into the blue screen. And so the newsreader would have your shot of Harrods and the correct size all shrunk and everything. So Quantel realized that this was usually about a quarter frame. And the thing was, the same way as reading the file out backwards or upside down, they could also just read every other pixel and every other line. And if you do every other pixel and every other line, you get a quarter screen image. So they added that facility on the 3000 and had a joystick where you could move it about. Well, what happened was they started to sell this box and mysteriously, you know, it was meant for offline edit suites and, uh, you know, and newsrooms. But they suddenly, you know, camera departments all over the place were buying it and people were all buying one of these because they wanted a freeze frame facility for drawing mats and they wanted uh, the quarter screen facility for doing effectsy things. So I show, you know, something like Doctor Who. Um, and, um, but every single company that bought this said, uh, oh, but we want to be able to make that any size. We don't just want to call, why is it locked to quarter screen? And Quantel, and there were so many people, they didn't tend to take notice of what people said, but there were so many people that um, asked for this that they realized this was a must. So they thought, well, this is for effects people though. This is not mm -hmm. for that. It's not for graphics, it's not for news. It's not for offline edit suites. This is, um, you know, for mainline production in, in drama or, or dance programs. So, um, 
Anyway, that led to the Quantel 5000 that was the effects box and allowed you to zoom the image in and out. You could program it so that it started in one place and you press the button and it went to another place. And, and it, it allowed the frame to go backward, it allowed to go upside down. And you could program these so that it looked like it flipped. So things would look like they were doing that or look like they yeah. were doing that. Of course, they were only doing this. They weren't doing this, they were doing this. But in fact, if you did it quickly, <coughs> it looked like it was spinning. So they, they put that functions on that box. Um, and this sold tremendously well and opened up a whole new field in television of, of what we now call visual effects. They initially call it electronic effects and then they call it video effects and then it became digital. And so that was that. So, um, what year was that? So, I don't know, about 1980. What, what year was that? About 1980. I would right. think. Okay. I would imagine. That was before my. That was before my um, time. And then, this led Quantel's management to say, "Well, what else could this this huge market here, and nobody else is doing it? What else can we do?" And then they, of course, being computer people, knew about in the universities the all the experimentation with electronic painting, which was the thing that. You know, it, it, in the R and D in universities, they were starting to look at as the kind of nascent computer graphics, and they decided they wanted to be the first out. Now there weren't there was there was AVA, which was Ampex Video, AVO Ampex Vid Video Opticals. Um, that was at the same time as the paint box, but the paint box won. They were in competition, and the paint box came out better. I mean, it was very clunky the Ampex one, but you know it was. And they had Ampex Digital Optics was their zooming machine. So th that was the equivalent of, and slightly behind the 5000. But it, when you, did, when you did this on their one, it did this. So theirs had perspective. So when things turned, they, they went like this. So it looked like something swiveled. So in other words, when, it, when this edge got mm -hmm. bigger as it went round, yes. and this edge got yeah, yeah. smaller yeah. as it went. So the Ampex Digital Optics Edo, uh, was the one after the Quantel, and that replaced it and actually became more popular and they sold more than Quantel did. But Quantel then brought the, the paint box out and Ampex brought the Ava out and the paint box won for that one. And that was the reason that they came to this idea of producing this electronic art machine because they'd conquered the kind of in-studio, you know, live television graphics type scenario and what they were looking at was can we do the graphics as well as we've done like television we've done sizing of pictures can we do the actual generation of the artwork as well and that's what the paint box was and so that was the first one and then they were being asked that, well they realized it was a, just th this one does a, has, a, has a slight memory in it but the original one which is what i worked on was only did one frame at a time and then of course they realized that you can't do any proper animation or anything with that. You need to be able to animate and you need to have a memory so that you can Creation. record all the frames yeah. one after yeah. the other and create an animation. Um, so that was the next thing and that came like the, this, this later version of the paint box, V-series paint box, allowed you to do some of that. But then they realized that actually people wanted, you, you could use the same technology to do it with pictures completely and put together um, the editing that the time based correctors had done, the picture moving that the 5000 FX box did, the painting that this did, you could put them all together in a digital okay. environment without any generations and therefore you could go on adding layers forever and that was Harry and that was a Harry which was for doing like whole commercials, it had 90 seconds of storage so you could do a 30 second commercial in it um, and but it was all inside it and then people said well yeah but you know, can we have a version for just doing edit? We need more memory. We need five minutes or ten minutes of memory so we can do an entire commercial. And that was Henry. And then I don't know what happened after that. <laughs> <laughs> so this was them <coughs> expanding. Take four. That's them expanding their, you know. I mean, that's a natural progression. If you, you do one thing and then you realize, my God, it opens up the world to something new. And know? also the designers and 
pe operators yeah. could then say to the people, it's great, you need to do this yes. though. So it was very led by the designer and, and the operator. And colour graded, we want colour grading, yeah. we want to be able to edit, we want to be able this to do This is too long, screen. I want to be able to ramp up this uh, mm. in this mode, not have to come mm. out or not have to yeah. reload keyframes, I want, I want it to flow better. Mm. I mean, but it flows you know, brilliantly yeah. anyway, it's a concept on its own, this machine was just yes. out there. So they could only improve on things. This was they the base only... that they built a whole mm. city. Yeah. Well, it's a family. And uh, family. Yes. <laughs> and and the the other thing was that the Harrier course allowed them to do blue screen, mm -hmm. which this was this kind of allowed you to do roto slowly by hand. But the Harrier allowed you to do blue screens where you shot a character against blue or laterally green, and then uh, put them into a background, and that allowed you to do that digitally. Yeah. So. That's something to, I've just gone through and done a few frames, I think. There we go, just jumping around. Go slowly to do it, but mm. but that was... Go on. Just in the time I said that. Well, I was a half kind of... Oh, yeah, it took me that long yeah. to... But I can't still find play wherever it's gone. Is about it? Well, yeah. No. Oh, yeah. I think it takes time to do it, but that's very punky sort of poppy art sort of feel was just you know what MTV, well, was, MTV, was, MTV was, was about for, it was it? Yeah. yeah yeah as but what you know did MTV come to exist like it did because of this or did this come to exist like it did because of MTV you uh, know, it's just it a, just, it was just a moment two things came together yeah it was you know? well it was like a welcome moment on both sides yeah. wasn't it so um yeah it was, it was fantastic it was a good time and this was yeah, just the machine to do it really. So, what else? What else did you do then? So, what, your your background and your history. You, um, where did you? Well, when did you? Did, when did you see this? Well, what happened was um, I came from a completely different angle from you. I mean, I was a cameraman in the BBC, and I was interested in effects. Uh, and so, you know, to cut a long story short, there were three of us that set up. Uh, electronic or video effects mm -hmm. um, and so and, and that was this was like we were doing Doctor Who and Blake 7 and uh, Wednesday play play for the day type you know big dramas uh, and I therefore you know we used blue screen a lot mm -hmm. um, and I was very familiar with that and a, a commercials company moving picture company um, which was a, a commercial production company, but it inv instead of buying yachts in the Mediterranean, had invested all their money in buying video gear because right. the managing director of Moving Pictures, a guy called Mike Luckwell, he thought, this is amazing. The I want to do electronic yeah. photography, you know, this is going to take everything over. This is, I mean, you know, he saw that right back then, but nobody else did. And, and he thought, this, this is fantastic because you can see the picture immediately and, that's where music, and you don't have to process that's where music it. Video started as well. Do you know what I mean? You, were you, were, you were coming? They were coming to you. Were they not coming to you with clients wanting music no, videos? No, we never did. They never paid did anything. So no, right. Never, no, no. This was commercials. <laughs> was he, commercials. he was he was a commercials production company, right, right. and he and he saw video. He thought this is the thing. You don't have to have the labs. You don't have to have any of that. You can do it all yourself. Yeah. And as a production company, they invested their money. They yeah. bought a camera. They the bought a little van for the because it needed a generator. They bought a Bosch Frenze handheld camera, one of the first ones you can get. They bought two inch video machines that were, you know, cost yeah. hundreds of thousands of pounds. I set up an edit suite and everything. And, and he was very much into that. And so they'd been going for a while and, you know, they did some production, but mostly still was on film. Um, and they, there was a thing called the Ultimat that was the oh, that rings Rolls bell. Royce of blue screen <laughs> devices. And this was invented in California. And it was where you could do blue screen, but when you had wide shots, the shadows Were. would carry through and be reproduced. Yeah. So you have a, a shot of a person that, you, you know, you had the actor in front of a blue screen and then you're putting them into a park scene. It and it never looked that. real because they never had a shadow, but this would reproduce. reproduce. If you let it so that there was a decent shadow right. and not hundreds of shadows, um, then uh, a single shadow and it was, you know, it, the, the, the tonal range Gen was good, generous, then it so. could take it through onto the background. Obviously, then you had to get your perspective and everything absolutely perfect because if the shadow went at the wrong angle, then it would all, then it or if the shadow went the opposite direction <laughs> of the shadow on the tree behind you. So <laughs> the, the, suddenly there was an awful yeah. lot more of planning. But anyway, and Mike Luckwell, who was getting excited by, you know, the success of the company using electronic editing mm -hmm. and electronic photography, 
um, thought this is the, the latest thing, you know, I'm going to get it, and he got this. But then none of the film lighting cameramen that they used on their commercials could could light for the Ultimat. They couldn't, you okay. know, they couldn't light the blue screen. That's where you. Um, and so he headhunted around and found me in the BBC, um, and um, and I went freelance. But event, you know, after a very short time. He talked me into joining them, and I went there because I could light for the Ultima. Mm -hmm. And so I was their kind of electronic photographer, stroke effects man. Okay. Um, and they come, you know, and then they got the first five thousand. The first, they got the very first Quantel that was bought by anybody. Mm -hmm. um, the picture mover machine, and I was involved with planning and shooting stuff for that. Um, so when the paint box came along, um, you know, I was one of the the, the people responsible yeah. for you know looking at new effects technologies and so that was how I came across it. Mm. We're, we're, we're at the point when we bought, so we bought the first the, the, the first one went to the BBC, mm -hmm. and the second one ever sold went to us. So wow. we got the first one that wasn't in a broadcaster, um, but we had no idea what to do. With it. it was a new technology. We just knew this is something that nothing else can do, yeah. and we've made such success with the Ultimat and with the the, the five thousand you know the Quantel picture mover. You know the number of commercials that, that you know all the titles were zooming <laughs> up and down like this for a couple of years. Um, so um, anyway, uh, so so we went for it, and we we just thought of it as a tool that we'd use. So we had two people mm -hmm. making commercials. There was a guy called Bill Mather made the film ones, and there was me made the video ones. So you know our natural assumption was we were the two kind of art creatives, you know, in the company. So we would do the paint box on our projects, and it would be like all the other equipment including the edit suite, they would just sit there if we weren't doing it, you know, it was for our own production. So anyway, we, we you know, that was the way we started out and, and we kind of learned, I mean, it's pretty, so it learned, had less did, menus you self than this then? one. Were you self yeah, I mean, it had less menus than mm. this, it was very easy to get a hang of. Yeah. So we, so we did that and that, that was all right. But then one day a, a commercial came along, but it was nothing to do with either Bill or I. It was one of their post-production jobs. So it, you know, it'd been shot on film and it was for Penguin Biscuits. Um, and they had all the usual thing. There was like six creatives from the agency all sitting <laughs> at the back of the edit suite, and they're editing away. And the show has been playing out. It's played out that night, so it was going to the whole. Because because in those days, you know, the, the commercials each ITV company was separate, and they all put out different commercials. Yeah. Okay. And so they had a, a magic moment on a Saturday on a Saturday morning. Uh, oh, ITV was only ever a network on Saturday afternoon when the sports went out. That was the only time that the whole network was all connected right. up. All the rest of the time, the independent companies in, in Wales and yeah. in, in the Midlands and in yeah. the south of England you know, were all different. Yeah. Um, and they all played, and there were separate companies, and they played out their own commercials, and they negotiated the deals with the clients and all that. So the thing was that all the commercials you know, tended to be made in London. So the ITV network only existed from 12.30 when their sports program started. Mm -hmm. But obviously they had to set the network up to get it and, and make sure it's all working because that sport program, it had to go flawlessly. Yeah. And the rest of the week, ITV wasn't a network, so it had to set it up. And it all went through the post office tar, yeah. um, you know, the, the yeah. telecom tar. Yeah. So um, what they did was they used to set it up at 11 o'clock and between 11.30 and 12.30, they played out all the commercials that would be shown in the whole of the okay. UK for that week, and each TV station recorded them all, okay. but they actually didn't usually record them all, they just recorded the ones that they would play out, right. and then put them onto tapes that they put in their cart machine. Uh -huh. So for that hour they were all played out, and that was the only time it happened during the week. If, if you missed that and you had an ad going out on Monday, mm -hmm. you know, if it was on Saturday you were really doomed, but if it was going out on Monday, then the alternative is you'd have to make a tip and put it on a motorcyclist, and the motorcyclist would have to take yeah. it the whole way to the station. That was the only way. There was no other way of getting it there. Oh, there wasn't a line. The ITV network only existed for those four or wow. five hours. So anyway, and this ad for this ad had to be, this was on a Friday, and the ad was being played out on Saturday morning, tomorrow. So it yeah. had to be finished. And they're all sitting in the edit suite. And they get to the end, and the editor says, now look, this is the point. I'm going to press the button. This is all going to be made. The master's copy is going to be made. Yeah. It's going to be played out. You have to tell me now. This is the moment of reckoning. Mm -hmm. And they played it again. And then one of the guys says, this voice piped up from the back, and I'm not exaggerating. This is the <laughs> honest to God truth. Said, we, we, we've assumed that the biscuit, the pack, you know, 
was a placeholder because you're showing us the green biscuit, the green packaging. Yeah. But the ads for the one in the blue packaging. Oh my God. Well, this is all on film, you know. Oh. I mean, this is like. And you could you call it? It's not it. on a video. <laughs> so they were. Well, I, what, but why didn't somebody <laughs> say? You know, we've been oh. here for two days, and they said, well, we just thought, you know, I mean, the biscuits are all the same size. We thought you were just doing that because you hadn't R1 ready yet or something. I said, no. No. So then they said, well, we've got this new bit of kit. I don't know. We don't know what it really does, but. So I'd been shooting all day, light, I was lighting in the yeah. studio, and I'd been shooting, and so they called me down and they said, do you think you can, and of course it was a static, it was the pack shot, so it was a static shot. And I said, oh, well, if you can feed me one frame, I think I probably can change it from green to blue. So we loaded it in the paint box and I changed it, you know, and then they went back and, they, and it was like you said earlier, but everybody was treating you like God. I mean, this was like <laughs> impossible. They, uh, this, they, they, they had almost lost their 20 grand they yeah. spent on their commercial by not being able to use it. Um, and so this was a miracle. Yeah. Well, of course, they all tell their mates and all that. And from this point on, That's we were getting jobs for, for the paint box. Now, yeah. we had thought of the paint box as being, you know, a graphic tool for making up titles and, and you mm -hmm. know, putting superimposition and things like that, making up logos and stuff. Yeah. We'd never thought of using it on live action material mm -hmm. at all, it never occurred to us. So anyway, then of course, Bill and I, who were supposed to be, you know, directing our commercials, mm -hmm. every, we finished in the studio, you know, we, if it, I always lit my thing. So I'd be in there with the electricians at 7.30 in the morning and we'd finish, you know, at seven o'clock at night or whatever. And then I'd have to go to the paint box because there was two. only Bill and I with only two people <laughs> and start doing that. And at two o'clock in the morning, I you know, dr drank myself out and I'm lighting in the studio at 7.30 with the electricians the next morning again. And Into you know, mom. it's like, so Into we mom. suddenly realized yeah. less than two, I mean, it was about a month in, we realized actually this machine sure. is, right. this is a money printing press. Yeah. for commercials yeah. because every single thing that's wrong there's a you know there's a hair there's a pack shot shot on film so you can't do anything about it and there's a there's a little bit of you know biscuits broken off in the corner there's a little black mark on the cyclorama cloth yeah. that nobody noticed till you know because they were just looking at the film yeah. um, and, and 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 all these things can be fixed and so we realized we have to get an operator and so at that stage we got in an operator so i operated the machine for literally two months and after that, I had an operator and I'd go down and say, right, we'll want that bit of black stuff or, you know, you want that green change to blue yeah. or can you paint a shadow in there and whatever. And I'd go off and come back two hours later or they'd, you know, bleep me and say, yeah. come back and have a look. Yeah. And so, so I only operated for that long. That but when right. Harry came along, I did play with that just to get familiar with it. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, when you were talking about your origins mm -hmm. in it and the fact when you started, there weren't any, you know, there was no, I mean, we, we, we find some artists to do this. Yeah. Um, that was just somebody you know that happened to be around that we, we picked but when we got the harry which was much more complex and we had the first harry as mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. um the um uh the only way we could deal with it was that we and we had to spend a lot of money on this to encourage him to do it and it caused a lot of bad feeling but we basically took the demonstrator from Quantel. <laughs> so we, we hired the guy that was the, 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 man, the man the main man at, 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 <laughs> yeah. at Quantel yeah. with, went to the exhibitions and when, when people went to see if they were going to buy it, you know, did the demonstration yeah. of it. It was the only person in the entire world, not just in the country, but in the world, mm -hmm. that, that, that was it. familiar with it and yeah. had played with it for six months. And we just offered him, an, you know, enough money to get him to leave, yeah. you know, the company where yeah. his career was based. Uh, and he, uh, currently, his most recent credit is on... Um, a film. Blade Runner, Blade the Runner. new Blade Runner. He <laughs> just was, was yeah. visual effects supervisor. Um, yeah, and the guy that we took from Quantel yeah. uh, is currently has a credit on Blade Runner, which God. he's just finished. Oh so my God. he has continued well, um, that, to do great work. <laughs> Quantel used to try and poach whoever they, they go around and train you up mm. and whatever company you are at. And then if you, you know, really enjoyed it, they'd try to say, do you want to come work for us? And then you'd be that like ambassador going, and mm. they you sent worldwide to go and train somebody else. Up. And you, the minute you went, in the minute you went to Montreal and Canada, yeah. there was a post house there. We decided to buy it yeah. and said to you, do right, you, you, you fancy living in us? Canada? Yeah. We'll get you a visa. I will. And we'll give I was you asked, a million dollars a year. I was asked <laughs> in New York if I wanted to go and operate in there after being in Rome, after being in Germany. Mm. You just literally hopped along to whatever Quantel was offered yeah. to you. Yeah. 
They were and, unique yeah. machines. And the names are, why do they call them such? Harriet, ha Henry, Ruff, I, I've I got, don't know. I, 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 somebody, I, I think somebody told me an age ago, and I might be wrong, or maybe they might have been joking, that it was something to do with the royal family, that the names are from... Oh, maybe. But, yeah. I, I have no I, I mean, but that I might, know. That might the, have been that first, Montel person having the, a, a joke the, with the, me. the first one was Harry. I've no idea it was why, why it was called Harry. I know that they then wanted, you know, to use names that began with an H. Yeah. And the, the editing one they called Henry because it was. And then the Harriet was. Harriet okay. suggests smaller. Yeah. And so, um, et. Yeah. Meaning, you know, um, so the Harriet was because it was a smaller, smaller than the Harry. But but I don't know the origin of Harry. Andre. I know the origin of Quantel, but yeah. I don't know the origin of um, of Harry. And I, I I do vaguely remember that somebody said it was the name of somebody relevant. It yeah. was yeah, I see. somebody too. a researcher that suggested it, or somebody that worked on it, or you know it was a working title. And then it I mean certainly it was a working title in the company. And then clients or prospective buyers. Mm. Um, heard it and all liked it and responded well and they thought what if that'd be a great name to call something by a person's name yeah um, it made it not just a bit of kit it was a person wasn't it almost i don't know oh just and then the other thing <laughs> talking about the how the order of these things and yeah. how they came about was the um the fact was that of course there was flame came mm. late later on there was flame came and the, the difference between what is the difference between a harry or a henry and a flame and and basically the difference was that the flame was a piece of software that ran on a generic computer yeah whereas yeah. the harry and the henry and the paint box were all Just a piece of specific hardware yeah. and that was all it did but to run flame you would buy a silicon graphics computer yeah. of the spec that they required and then install it like you now would install you know microsoft was, word on a computer what was it? flint was like the baby that was like harriet so it's flame flint, oh, well, there flame was inferno on, yeah. all these inferno was the big it was one all flint fire, was the small one fire based isn't yeah. it so it was quite their their strategy for naming their kit actually was quite interesting i yeah, found that quite yeah. quite unique and the way they then could this was just one interface there you know there it is there was no idea that I could, and the limitations on some of this, sometimes when I built like a 3D object out of different VT cutouts, I could access them together, join them together, and then globally rotate them. Sometimes I'd have that made, built, I keen framed it, and then if I wanted to slightly <coughs> rotate, and I had like a global command, which the axis would be here, and I wanted just to swing it just slightly to come and animate across, sometimes it would just lose it, and it'd end up like behind you. <laughs> and behind you'd lose it, you'd lose, you, you can't find it. it. You'd spend ages doing minus two or minus, yeah. where's it gone, where's it gone? Whereas and you couldn't zoom out couldn't, like now. I couldn't yeah. Apple Z it, and I couldn't on the Flint go back to the schematics and pull it back into, you know. So this was, I would say the only thing is that sometimes with keyframes and the, the size of it, sometimes it would, it would just flip, wouldn't it? Yeah. And it would just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, were, you were lost and all you could do yeah. was original all. Yeah. and start again yeah. <laughs> and there were other ones you know there was because there was like symbolics was 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 a really heavy duty artificial intelligence early artificial intelligence um I mean, it, 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 you know a computer designed for programming mm -hmm. in the early idea of what artificial intelligence was yeah. not yeah, what not, they not, considered yeah. now um, and there was symbolics machines and they were another company that were you know it was military stuff and then they needed to increase their clients so they'd go broke and so they went after entertainment and, and medicine but then they did eventually go broke but that but we, we played an mpc we played with their machine for a while and then we ended up we used alias which was the 3d uh, yeah, software yeah, that we used yeah. um which became maya yeah and yeah. Maya's, maya's still, still going isn't it yeah, yeah. It is interesting. Yeah, do you want to have a go? I don't think there's anything I can add to it. Well, well, it'd been, you know, it's. I don't know. Go on. It's a bit slower than you think, though. What I think it was, you see, I, I, I think I remember it is because that was the way it was and we were used to it. Yeah. We, you know, but but you you worked slower than you would now. See that I, I just want to um, 
have a play. I'm, and I, there's no point me having a play. The only thing we could talk about is the male female thing in the industry, couldn't we? A couple of things to pick up, yeah. It's all right, I could. I've got, I've got a machine that could fix that. <laughs> yeah, it's all right, we can paint the mic. It's all right, I can paint it, we can rotoscope it out. <laughs> things we've missed. So no, just got to pick up. So the buy sell we're going to go back to, just because it's actually not, not as clear. I don't think either of us know the answer to that one. Mark, Mark. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's, just, it's just putting it on the. But why? <laughs> well, that's the terms they use, but that's... Yeah. They, use, they yeah. use the term buy-in, yeah, so you sell it, just, just save it and store it, and then you get it back out of storage. It's just yeah. a way of putting it into the storage. Yeah. Do you know, I, I think that maybe, you see, save in computer te technologies, that saving your entire set, save, saving the project, as it were, and I think that they were differentiating, because there is a save somewhere in the, in the library, isn't there a save? Yeah. Um, I think that the Mark. selling, selling and buying is the, the image that you're creating to the store for the images, That's as opposed to saving, on the which is order. saving the project, including mm -hmm. the component parts that make. So when you do the buy and sell, it's only the finished image. To but when order. you do save, it's all the component parts that make that image. I think that is what the difference is. <laughs> you're saying that that library save pick goes to the MO, is that what you're saying? And that's elements, but the it's a different thing. Cell is, cell cell is, to is to differentiate cell, cell is going when, to that RAM recorder. Yeah, cell is only going to the RAM recorder. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's not going to load but it is to the finished, library. But it's finished video yeah. frames. Yeah. And the other one is saving, elements. you know, the whole, well, well it's saving the, the, the digital setup, as it were, as opposed to video frames, I think. Well, that's the, just the that's other, the way, other around. way around. That's the other way around. So you just, so you just, reverse, just, so you just, re yeah. So you you take in the next frame, and rather you know rather say taking it in, you'd you'd buy it into the machine, buy it into the RAM corder, yeah. where then you could then use it with paint books or graphics yeah. or effects, and then once you've done your your change, you can then sell it back to the next mm -hmm. frame on, and so you're basically. You know, you're jazzing up one frame, adapting it, and selling it right back to the place that it was on, so it's updated. And you'd buy it in, and then adapt it, and then sell it back on top of the, the exact same place. So you'd have so that buy, buying and selling would be completed, finished yeah. video frames, but saving would be saving the the project as a library were. save. So yeah. it would be saving all the elements and a digital thing. So the the the, the saved thing would only be usable by the paint box, but the sold thing would be what you would put on air. And what you'd play, yeah. yeah, you'd play out to tape, and that was... Correct, yeah. yeah. So... two different places to store... To save, yeah. And you're storing something different, you see. You're storing something that paint box would use to construct the image that you had created and would allow you, therefore, a certain amount of backward mo motion of, of fiddling with it. Yeah. But the, the cell... Would, is where you're outputting your completed. You're completely your completed finished. Thing. It's your play out, and you can in your the I mean the library is, come on the library is like you say you can save pictures, you can save stencils, which are the little windows that you can create effects. You can save the cutouts. Mm. You can but save. But they're all pin box. These media, are elements. Only it's, usable by these the are, pin These box. are the elements. So palettes, cells, sequences, keyframes, colors, curves, everything of that. All the components that you're making your picture from can get be saved on the disc. So and none of that. the saves would be any use to the producer that you were doing no, the job for. It's only for they are, they are things that belong to you yeah. as the operator to create what the producer wants. And if he wants and to what go the back and change wants, it. His product is the sell. And yeah. in a way you could see an analogy there that you know it's in a shop, you're selling what you what you give to the client, you sell to the client. This is the fine this is your it's product fine, and this so. is what you sell. But you can't sell them all the bits. No. So when you're making a you, you know, when a carpenter's making something, he, he, using all those tools and the paints, he can't 
give the, 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 the client's not interested in those, he is interested in the final picture or you know, yeah. drawer that you've made. This is also the thing that was amazing, it helps me explain this because actually it's all about hardware, not software. So you've got to get it out for hardware. Yes. Yeah. Um, that's right, and uh, you know, and I talk to guys. Um, sorry. I, oh, sorry, I just fiddled with my. It was itching. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, the um, at, at one stage, uh, you know, the company I worked for, Moving Pictures, was part of the same company as Quantel at one stage, and so when they wanted advice and and you know brainstorming sessions with operators, we we were always the first ones to get to chat to them um, because. You know, we were part of the same family, um, and uh, Paul Keller was head of research, and uh, and uh, you know, I, I had remember having a meeting with him where I, I myself and uh, Richard Bain, who you know was the operator, um, we uh, had lunch with him, and you know, we we were saying, well, you know, the, and and of course we were thinking corporate. And we were saying, well, no, but what do you want to do? At this stage, there were other, like Flame had started to appear, and, and now there was, there was PCs uh, and, and early Macintoshes that you know, had, had good um, graphics capabilities, and, and desktop publishing was opening up. And we were saying, look, you know, it's so famous. That your, your stuff is used on all the big TV shows, and the public knows the name. Paintbox is now you know, like Hoover. It's one of those generic names. Um, and what you guys should do is you should write a suite, in a software suite that reproduces the, the, exactly the menus and the methodology of swiping on and off and everything. Recreate exactly what your hardware does in software that you would put on any PC or SGI workstation. Um, and then, you know, instead of selling 1,000 machines at £50,000 each, You'd be able to sell a million machines, uh, sorry, a million boxes of software for two hundred pounds. But in fact, your million two hundred pounds would be worth more than your, your you yeah. know, your thousand, fifty thousand pounds. Um, and he said, "Well, you miss no, no, no. That's of no interest to us because basically, what that means is we'd be sitting at a desk, and some man in in China or Singapore would be running a factory, making the discs and the box and printing the boxes and." And selling them, and so you know that's not us anymore. We're artisans. Our greatest product isn't the paint box or the Henry. Our greatest product is this factory. Mm -hmm. Our product is the production line that, for a price that is still you know pretty affordable for this amazing hardware, yeah. and our hardware will do it faster than a generic piece of software. On a, yeah. a, you know, sorry, yeah. than a piece of software on a generic yeah. computer. Yeah. Our hardware will do it faster because yeah. it's 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 optimized for just doing just that painting job. But our art and our creation is the factory and the infrastructure that has designed and created this magic box that is only this size and can do all this stuff. And if we came to just selling. Um, you know, discs with software on it, well, we'd retire. Yeah. Now, what is interesting is that eventually, you know, it, it all did go that way and Flame came along and Flame actually wiped out most of their yeah. products yeah. because Flame was exactly that, a, ge a, a, a generic computer that you install a piece of software on and they just sold the software. Um, and interesting that Paul Keller, who was the head of research and the, and the designer of a lot of these things and the, the, the principal creative behind it all, um, when he retired, and he retired because he had something to go to, what did he do? He went and headed up the project to restore and rebuild the Colossus at Bletchley Park. Mm -hmm. And what is interesting is that that is a kind of complete circumlocation of his career because he'd started out doing stuff for military, the, yeah, you know, right. the war yeah. ended, then the military wasn't buying much anymore. He went into television and then he eventually retired and went back to rebuilding the machine that he probably, at the <laughs> beginning, as, as a trainee yeah. in his teens, but he would never that's be it. able to speak about it, it probably worked yeah. on. You know, so that's a beautiful yeah. bit you can put at the end of the tape because it's a wonderful finish. This is quite wonderful. <laughs> and I'm not going to cut it, but one thing I want to ask for the business is a line, is give Tom a break. That's all right. 
Yeah. If you let oh. me, if you let me do it yeah. and not talk at the same time, so my no, brain's just slowing just down. Just <laughs> Shall I tell you a really funny? I did fall asleep once on night shift, did you? <laughs> and I went. It was the first time I'd done night shift. And I fell asleep. I left something processing on the howl. And I just went like that, and I fell asleep. And it, it had, used to say howl there. And um, the designer came into the room, and uh, we were. He was like my mentor because this was when I first became a designer. And uh, he said, how are you doing now? And I was like, oh, yeah, fine, fine, absolutely. Yeah, it's just processing. Oh, look, it's finished. He goes, let's have a look. And I went, there we go. And I played it out. And he went, oh, that looks really nice. I went, oh, he goes, how are you coping with night shift? I said, yeah, no, fine, fine. He goes, you've got Hal embedded on your forehead. <laughs> 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 I was like, I can't lie, yeah. <laughs> I like just <laughs> well, a similar story, but far, oh. far, oh. but oh. not so. Let's, 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 now we do the title. Oh, yeah. Well, this story is this continuation of that. Adapt? Let me just do this story, which is the, the, yeah. the ultimate example of what you just said, which was a guy, um, oh, I've forgotten what his name was, who was an editor uh, and just brilliant at MPC and went to work um, at Flick FX in New York, uh, which was a very trendy advertising boutique place. Um, and he was doing Henry. Uh, and he had a room full of creatives mm -hmm. uh, and this guy was in his early 30s and was on a rowing team was very fit was a big big Australian guy uh, and you know they, they were saying make it a bit greener make it a bit bigger make it a bit smaller and at some stages it was like and he went did what you did and he went down like that <laughs> and then they sat there and they're all kind of having their whiskies and their you know their sushi and stuff and thinking he's He's fallen asleep. <laughs> and they went and prodded him and he fell off the chair and he was dead. And he'd had a heart attack and died in the oh, middle of the session. Balls. Oh my God. <laughs> if you're going to go. It was pretty neat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How you'd like to go now, <laughs> Yeah, it's coming in with me. <laughs> oh my God. That's absolutely true. <laughs> well, it was such a, I mean, uh, they, let's, 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 yeah. yeah. I've got to do. I've got to work out how to do it. No, because you can't talk to me. I've got to think. Do you want to say? Do I say about how the industry was male, female? But uh, right. Okay. Because it's just um, yeah. Do you want to adapt? <laughs> Ooh, why does Ooh. that do that? Adapt. So I do it on here. Oh, yeah, adapt. <laughs> so adapt. Just adapt. Adapty. <laughs> I am pressing it. It's just adapt. Yeah, I know. Television. 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 Oh, adapt. Just, just adapt. Adapt TV. TV. Just adapt. 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 Ooh. <laughs> there used oh to God, be. Oh God, I'm going to do a very bad client here. Isn't it? <laughs> Why uh, I don't like that blue. It's, only, it's, so, oh, it's up in the top left. I don't what is your colour? What's your <laughs> Yeah, what is the colour of adapt? We don't have a well, letterhead. Adapt. What's your adapt. letterhead? We don't even have that. You don't have a letterhead. How does it make the, the letterhead? Oh. <laughs> letterhead. <laughs> Webhead. So, oh, where's the size? And there are any 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 values. Oh, found it. Okay. Uh, I think it is. Is it like this, that? This is actually amazing. Yeah, you know, just, I'm just thinking, this is amazing. This is a very old piece of equipment. I'm talking about the machine, not me. That <laughs> is, comp I mean, this is, she's, you know, now doing a proper job. This is completely working. And it's, what, 30 years old. That is astounding, you know. Mm. Cause it's so good. It's just built well, isn't it? Well, our man Mark is yeah. our man Mark is a genius, obviously. <laughs> okay, so I've just still yet to remember how to do this because it's the buy and sell thing on the mouse mm. that I'm not. I might have to have a. We'll have a chat. experimental version and then start again. Would be the thing to do. Yeah, you start. 
I just can't quite remember. I just prefer to do this if you weren't all watching because it's tricky. <laughs> Hang on. No one's looking. Aren't you, Mark? <laughs> I just want know what I want to do. Okay. I just want to clear that ram corder, record to background, load tray, animation, record to background. We can see it, can't we? How do I make that all just be the background, record still? Well, that was it, wasn't it? Yeah, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so now it's... Oh, wait, okay. I've got it, I think. Why does it not stay within that? Set background frames to be one, two. Background frames, I just did one, two, 25, yeah. And then go up that end, please, and do low picture and quarter background. Yeah. Okay, happy days. That's that, and that's in. That's my background. So I can just. Now I just do. Then it's just. Stamp some more. 70, two, uh, too many. <laughs> 17, I don't, I, 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 2001, 17. 17 years ago. I think you did this. Did, I did this. <laughs> but it's sadly very, very, it just shows how good this machine was and that, you know, it's, well, it's for operating wise, it's yeah, just. User interface is, is really. So, Intuitive. Yeah. So I'm going to do a little animation um, in an MTV rough and ready styly, <laughs> um, where I can take the text from generated from the paint box of different sizes, and I can use that stamp and smudge and varying degrees to give it a kind of a, a rough t t animation. So again, if you press down, it does set the. Uh, transparency has to be set here it's not like with the pen and airbrush yeah. you can't kind of ask it to be less or more by pressure um, it has to be sort of preset here and so that's a little bit too strong so I'm going to go in and just do a few frames by hand animating with adapt and then possibly yeah I'm going to buy and sell that so I'm going to sell it to the ram corder so that's the first frame so that's gone down it's actually gone down in frame four but i'll start it at frame one um so we can do a few more stamping effects and we can kind of build it up in density and size so zoom that in and so you just got to watch the text there can you see that Enjoy there's no the apple edge. z mm. so <laughs> you just work it into the design <laughs> and get, take that off and so that's taking the next frame so you can see oh okay it's going from five okay that's me so you can make it jump around and give this sort of animated effect and it's nice to it like I say a little bumper or a little uh, logo ident bit of nattiness trying to think of a show in the 80s that had this sort of thing on terrestrial um it, it i knew a title it was uh it was one of those talk sh it was it was a london weekend talk show not parkinson who was the other guy Prime. russell no russell something russell harty <laughs> russell harty had these titles what say it again Oh. So, no, what were you trying I, to think of? I, I was trying to think of a show that had this sort oh, of effect. Oh, that had those. It yeah. was um, the talk show, London Weekend Television talk show, not Parkinson. Uh, um, Har Russell Hardy. Russell, Hul Hulsey, Russell yeah. Hardy. That did that, didn't it? Yeah, mm. but they had it kind of just coming down, didn't they? They had a kind it was of. Was it kind like of. Did, is that what it was? It had down, his name yeah. all over the screen, yeah. didn't it? Mm. Well, they probably had different versions of it, I suppose. It went on for years, didn't it? It did. did. They'd be on a sell-by date. <laughs> <laughs> sell-die. That was a joke.
<laughs> yeah, so you can go on and you can change colours with this as well. You, you can stamp it. Change the sizes and just build it up. But you always had to swipe. You, I was, yeah. You always. I say it would never take the menu. That's the good thing. It would just never do that. So you can get that kind of idea of it sort of jogging around, mm. coming from size and coming up, and then being really agitated and then pinging back. So. It's, it, it actually, it, 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 well, it's not the best ever, but there's no machine ever done, been better than it for the soft, where you have things overlapping and they double up. Nothing that else. that softness is as good as any machine's ever. People have equaled it, but they've never bettered it, have they? No. For th this, what you built up there, where two go on top of each other and get darker. And a lot of machines no, don't do that additive effect very well. No. So that's, mm. so uh, this is going to be very, very fast. Yep, there we go. <laughs> but you can get, you can carry on building this up. Mm. And, and then presumably you've won at the it's end that's just solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it kind of flickers that. around and then solid, just, solidifies yeah. as a title. As so well. I lost that. I lost that main um, colour then, so I can just go back in and pull it back up again. Sample it. Yeah. Yes. This is just gone again. Go on. Paste up. Uh. Yeah. You're Do already quite wrong. fast. Yeah, I am. Again, I've just done something. You, you after one and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm doing something now that I can't work out what I've done. Stencil, stamp, this smear. Is it? Nothing at the moment. I'm just waiting to sell that when I've got a, the cutout back on the right place. I'm going to have to ask Mark. <laughs> That's, I'm doing something, but I can't remember what it was. So I'm gonna sell that now, it's one button, and, and it'll sell this picture to the RAM corder and bring me the next picture back up, which is a white frame. And I can't remember this bit. So I'm trying to pull that color back up to be a solid. Was it that? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, there we go. There used to be, there was another machine maybe where you just tapped a colour into the box for that to be, the cutout to be that colour, I think. So I just buy and sell so you can just build that up. You know how like when film goes through a gate and, mm. and it kind of rolls, like the Channel 4 I don't at the moment, you know the Film, film mm. 4 one? Mm. Mm. And it goes through like a, as if it's going through a, like a building. Mm -hmm. And then it's sort of unregistered, and then it kind of comes back, and that that sort of effect you can Loses get. Loses lock. Yeah, mm. yeah. So this is a style that you could do with this machine. This looks really nice. And typography, I mean, it's just in its own right, it's just fantastic because you could go in and you could affect each letter all its global spacing, its kerning, you yeah. could alter each size of each letter individually. So yeah. you could have like Helvetica yeah. and just, you know, adapt word, but you could have, you know, the A bigger than the, the D bigger than, yes. and make your own typeface. You could, I think you can actually reverse some letters individually, but I mean, that's on the later paint books, but so you could make a logo really easily and mm. not have to put up with, you know, that kind of, um, kerning that was that came from when you know from Quantel you could, you could you could just change it you were right that's it okay it's doing that now mm. so selling. selling and buying selling and buying buying and selling 
but I've got that white again. There's something that I'm doing right. So I can put that colour in there. And this should be. It's just not, I don't know why, whether this is a glitch or whether it's me. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Buying and selling each frame. I'm still doing it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, and why? Only white at the moment. But I mean, the thing is, is that that I could go. What I could do now after this, I could sell and buy this one in. I could then go back over this and just say I don't feel that it's you know it's got that energy. It hasn't got that feel. So I could then add another another layer to that. So I can go through and say, yeah, it's nice, but it's a little bit too busy. I want to diffuse it a bit more, put a bit more white text on it. I could put a vignette on it. I could add, you know, build up layers now from this process and add more and more layers to it. So it's not, that's not finished. I can then work on that layer with cutouts, with more text. So it kind of evolves in, in, in whatever the sort of producer or whoever you're working for likes. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about working producers. When this, when this became so widely available, in, in particularly TV, and talking about TV programs, you've got producers from all these programs who don't know much about it, they're not artists. What was it like working with people? Were they coming in with strange demands, or were they queues at the door? Or was it just yeah. How did that relationship change? Uh, I, think, I think it'd vary. For me, journalists were very. Did you work with journalists? You wouldn't have. It's a journalist. We're very lastminute.com. I want this look, and it's due in four minutes. Mm. And so you'd have like a, a backup of resources. Um, you'd have maps. You'd have you had an effects tape. You had different master stencils. You had stuff that you can kind of your go-to's so that you can build and compile a graphic that would probably have taken like an hour in four minutes. You just kind of have those sort of things by your side um and they were yeah they were they were tricky people and then there was people that there were clients that you know like you're saying the kind of the, with all the clients that i had behind me you know were willing to spend hours days on a highlight and you know prepare to pay, pay silly I think money for the that ag the agency creatives mm. um the, the, these were really priced in the early days, certainly pr priced very high. The suites were very expensive. Yeah. Um, and a, a lot of these creatives, you know, you'd get to the point where you really had fulfilled the brief, but they just wanted to go yeah. on and on and on. And yeah. the thing was that a lot of them, it was like they were trying in their heads, they wanted to feel that they'd got their money's worth mm. and they wanted to feel that they had spent a lot and that, 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 that the ad had had the best possible attention and therefore it needed six hours of work, even though at the end of an hour, you know, done. somebody yeah. working like this can, can as you are seeing this being done, very rapidly do it and maybe inside an hour completely fulfill the brief and in fact surpass it. But they still, you know, they said it was going to take a day and it damned yeah. if it wasn't. And so they would do finigly stuff about, well, is that the right green? And you quite often, you know, you, you had to make sure you saved stuff because they would fiddle for two hours and then they'd say, actually, I think Go what you had to start was. was right. <laughs> yeah. Or that you, you'd, didn't it? actually, what, but for me, when I was working with producers, that you'd go, uh, you'd offer them something and then they'd go, mm, can I just see it like this? Yeah. And go, yep, sure. So you'd spend all this amount of time going right to where you're about to confirm that they they were wrong and you were right. And they go, no, no, you no, it's okay. Do it how you're going to do it. And you're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> but that, you know, it's a very, it was a, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult industry working with a lot of creatives. Creatives are tricky. And then people that are very high up, that, uh, that one person that's not creative, um, causing a kind of a, a little bit of a tension. Oh, well, or... there's when the ultimate client comes. So <laughs> that when you're doing the Mars commercial and you've got all the people from the agency and then on the third of the four days, the man from Mars comes in yeah. and they're all, the you man. know, co to him and he knows nothing about anything that you've 
done up to now or indeed necessarily how TV works. <laughs> and then he would be asking for insane things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it was a very, as a woman, it was a very male filled industry. Mm. Um, I think I was probably, I, I maybe no two other ops when I was doing commercials. Um, so it was quite another another kind of mm, barrier to get through. Mm. I remember doing um, the Simply Red. Um, it was one. It was a, a music video, and this is where they came. You know, Quantel came into its own. It was just fantastic for special effects. It was set in a fairground, and we had lots of diffuse blurs, um, like that effect they've got at the moment. You know what I mean? When you have red, like it makes people look miniature, so they've mm. got a very oh, sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. tight focus here, and then the rest of it is unnecessarily yeah. blurred. Yeah. And the, the whole video was was like that. And I spent ages doing it, and they they really really liked it. But they were like, "Oh, who are you? You're a woman doing this." <laughs> and um, I've, I've, I was a bit of a you know novelty, um, and that I, I don't think that's been any different all the way through the whole time I've worked actually. I mean, there have obviously been, you know, an amount that go through, but not half as many as, as men. That's, it's yeah. It's just, yeah. Just, yeah um, No, no. Well, um, I didn't do news. Not paint box. Not you wouldn't use paint box. Well, isn't like it'd be, mm. you'd have done like those Astons that you used to do. Yeah, I mean, I'd, they I'd, would have been live, wouldn't they? Sometimes. All Astons, all, all text from the cap gens was live always. Mm. So you had to really, you know, concentrate. <laughs> um, but the paint box was very rarely played out, and if it was, then you would be, um, there was a, bit, uh, a facility where you could press without any um, menus or anything, and so you could play out a little thing that's on your camcorder and play that out, so you could do that. It was very, but very you'd never rarely. never any artwork. Like no, you, no you wouldn't artwork. be drawing. It's not no, it, it was like a, for that. It was an animation, and you could play, you could play that out, because you could have micros, um, which would animate a series of like circles. So if mm. there was some place that had been attacked, you could put the, that cursor mm. on the map and it would radiate, look here, this is where the bombings happened. Mm. But it's under very rare and urgent, wouldn't it? That, It'd that be more you'd, likely you'd, that you'd, you'd make that animation in the middle of the screen and then they'd use a picture mover to put it yeah. over the bit during the broadcast. Or, or they, I mean, or they comp stuff this together. Is post yeah, this is, yeah, this is post. I mean, this is a rigid, this is, this is a kind of pre well a production Post device. It's it's for post production pre you know pre making things to be used subsequently. Um, it's not. It's not live. a live. It's not a live machine. Um, I don't think any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wouldn't have been. Use live. Because it's menu driven, it's not really. So Mitch, before we stop to see the final animation. Oh. Did you get that from I should nice. probably finish on a it's amazing. Well it's not full frame I'm, in the middle. Yeah. I, yeah, it's not really It's the stop, <laughs> as it were. Can it do just uh, uh, at the end? If it oh, does one last it. little, when it. it goes full frame, if it I did can a carry on doing jiggle, this for days. Well, no, if it just <laughs> if you went to the single word <laughs> full frame, but made it have one little jiggle, it's like so it's gone, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it just have one bump. I'm just trying to. Doesn't even do. <laughs> just sell that. Is it because I'm on the last frame? Probably. Doesn't do it again. Yeah, okay, done it. Oops. Oh, that's reappeared. <laughs> that's me, I'm just pressing the wrong. No, fine. <laughs> that should be this one. Confirm it and paste it. Stick it and. 
So is this, this now is, writing over that other caption? Is that what you're doing? I think now? I've gone up to 25. Oh, it's because I went. Twenty-seven. This might be something. No, yeah. that was it. Perfect. <laughs> Absolutely. Very good. Yeah. Like it. <laughs> Love it. Now, I'm about sick of. I'm going to say, what is it like being back? I just have to ask you the final question. What's it like being back? It's just the best. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's a very, I mean, amazing oh. aid memoir that you know. You, you, it all comes back to you, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a little a bit rusty, things. but it is just the best machine. I think mm. it's such a pity that they just, I think they sat back and went, yeah, look what we've done. And they didn't move on with times. And they just, it's such a pity because they could still be mm. running the, running the show. But they didn't it's just, want to do that. That was the thing, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. It's, I still, I mean, you know, you look at Photoshop and that's Photoshop is great, but... I'm going to have a real difficulty now when I go home. I'm going to start swiping off. <laughs> well, the swiping is the thing I love. You know, you just the start... fact I have a Wacom tablet on my Photoshop, it, it's very frustrating that yeah, you can't do that can't because do you just it. want all the menus to vanish. I'd never wear, I'd never wear this. I'd never wear my rings. Mm. I watch. You'd, I'd basically every time I, I sit down, I put my off. watch down. Mm. I take my bracelet off. I'd have a little ritual. Take my rings off, and then, then you could really move quite fast. Mm. And yeah, I know it's been. It's just. Yeah, um, I still feel the same about it when I saw it. It's just, its capacity is, is, is boundless and endless. It's only you that limits it, it's, isn't it? Mm, mm. 